Long time no see. Uh, my name's Abby, and I am a junior at Scott. I like your work. <laughs> and this one is titled, There's a Dead Boy on Pacific Street, and I am here writing poetry. I am not sure what I am more afraid of, what has gone by or what awaits me after. There was a boy in my freshman year character skills class that sat one row to the left and three seats behind me, and we didn't talk. And last, last October, his car experienced a rollover crash. I know that I am getting older. I know that I am 16 and 7 eighths, that my birthday is three weeks away, and soon I will be able to drive between 5 in the morning and 1 in the morning. And I keep forgetting to switch my calendar from March to April. Maybe I just got used to the picture of dandelions on my wall, or maybe I like thinking that there's a consistent ceaselessness when I have not found one yet. When time is always twisting and losing and screaming, let me rephrase that. I still pass by 192nd when I drive to my best friend's house. There is no cross on the sidewalk anymore, but the boy that sat behind me is still dead. And I am not yet 17, and he is still 17. He will always be clueless 17, but I have to wonder if he knew that night. And if he prayed before his car tipped, what I am trying to say is that I cannot make a teenage boy's death poetic any more than a private internment is poetic, any more than a 2001 birth date is poetic. I do not have the right to write a stranger's eulogy, but am I not lucky that I get to stand up here and talk about a boy my age that does not exist anymore? as if it is okay, as if it is just, as if it is only a work to be published. I'm not saying that I don't want to go on, but how are any of us more worthy than another to experience an 18th birthday? That despite us transferring after freshman year, despite us laughing about how we got to escape our administration, despite us all forgetting, is it not selfish that I am able to write about aching months passing by and by and by and think about how you will never get to turn the calendar page from that freezing day in November when his car screeched across the lane divider? Does it not feel unnatural to know that while we, we are all terrified of walking out of our parents' houses and never coming back, of decorating boxes with our names on them and picking out mattresses, there's a boy that will never get to worry about it. I do not know what I am more afraid of, but I want to know if he was afraid too when his car twisted over the sidewalk, if he was afraid that he had no time left, or if he was afraid that afterwards he would have too much. I remember we were assigned a biography project in that class when we were 14. And the boy ambled up to the whiteboard from the seat one row to the left and three desks behind me, pointed at the clumsily made PowerPoint diagram of his cousins and his grandparents, and talked about his two little sisters, talked about how he enjoyed playing basketball, talked about how he didn't know what he wanted to do with his life, but he'd like to figure that out someday. <laughs>